new to our lineup is the ACX 1120H, ACX 1150, and ACX 1150H. The 1150s have a touch screen interface. The 1120 uh, has a black and white screen with the uh, alphanumeric keypad. Uh, they use the exact same software, so they may look different, but the menus are the same. The 1120 is available in hybrid only. Uh, the 1150 is a standard machine and then the 1150H is a hybrid certified. Uh, the 1150s have a load cell for the oil bottles. Uh, the 1120 does not have a load cell in the oil bottles. All three machines have the Ecolock couplers. The first thing you're going to do out of the box and off the pallet is remove the load cell set screws. The 1150 and 1150H have oil bottle load cells and that set screw is just above the waste oil bottle. It is a chrome screw. You're going to remove that and there's a, another set screw on the bottom of the machine for the refrigerant load cell. The 1120 only has the set screw for the refrigerant. There is not a load cell for the oil bottle on the 1120. Removing the refrigerant load cell set screw, you'll find a bolt with a wing nut on the bottom of the machine. All you need to do is loosen the wing nut and remove the bolt, and that will free up the load cell uh, for the uh, commissioning of the machine. The ACX 1120 and 1150s must be registered within 30 days once they're first turned on. Uh, this machine you can see on the screen has, has hit zero days. It will not let us go any farther until we register it at this point. So we're going to hit OK. It gives us the registration website. Hit OK. And what we'll do now is we'll go to that website and we will enter this number along with the shop information and then it will give us the counter code. Okay, so we went to the website, entered the code, entered our shop information, hit OK, and we'll enter our counter code. We'll hit enter. Registration done. Okay. And we'll get to our startup screen then. Available refrigerant and total refrigerant weight. Hit OK and it takes us to our main menu. Okay, the Ecolock couplers with Ecolock enabled. It will prompt you to connect to a vehicle but do not open the coupler. So we're connecting our couplers onto our park fittings here as an example. So we connected to our vehicle or park fittings for now, but we did not open the couplers. They are still closed. They are press continue on the screen and the eco lock process will start. What it does when it does the eco lock is it removes or pulls a vacuum on the small space in between that coupler and the vehicle fitting. Uh, this, this eliminates the, uh, uh, the puff of refrigerant that you, you let escape when you disconnect a coupler from a vehicle. So it's an environmentally friendly uh, part of the service. Now when that is complete and it pulls the vacuum out of there, it will prompt you to then open the couplers, at which time you can open, continue with your service. At the end of the service, it'll prompt you to close the couplers. Close the couplers. Ecolock process will start once you press continue and it will evacuate that little area again before it allows you to disconnect. Um, 
it's important that you follow the prompts on the machine with this enabled. With EcoLock enabled, it is a roughly three minute process each time. So it adds about six minutes to the entire service. And EcoLock can be disabled in the settings if, uh, if they choose to. Multi-pass. Multi-pass is the 1120-1150 version of Recycle. It cycles the refrigerant through the internal filter dryer to purify the refrigerant. Multi-pass will happen at the end of cylinder fill, at the end of recovery, and at the end of uh, automatic service. It's important when multi-pass comes up that the couplers are not connected to any system. It will pressurize the lines when it starts. I'll hit yes. And this, this right here is a status bar for the process. You'll see it just started to, to go there. I'm going to abort this just for, for time. The 1120H comes with a separate flush adapter. The 1120H has these fittings here. They are park fittings only. The 1150H does not come with the separate adapter. These park fittings are a pass-through. This is the flush adapter for the 1150H. All right, so what we've done here is uh, remove the top plastic, and this is to gain access to the solenoid block and the uh, control board. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these metal panels here. Pull out our cover. And, uh, ground connector. Okay. Here we have our solenoid block. These are one 10 volt solenoids. This is our power supply. And this is our control board. The interface board is attached to the back of the control panel or the touch screen. All right, so we're inside the front of the machine here. Uh, here we have our filter dryer. Down here is our compressor. The compressor replacement will be this uh, galvanized metal bracket here. Uh, we'll call it the compressor module. This is replaced as one unit. Uh, the vacuum pump down here in front will have to be moved out of the way to replace this compressor module. On this side of the machine we have our internal tank. Uh, the 1120 H, 1150 and 1150H have this uh, condenser with a fan here that is also on our load cell. Uh, this weight down here in the bottom, this is our calibration check weight, which is just secured by this bolt and wing nut. If we were doing a calibration check, it has the amount printed on it. And we just set it inside here. And we verify on the screen that the weight increases by that amount. That would be the calibration check for 1120H, 1150, and 1150H. The first screen that comes up when you turn the machine on is the uh, total refrigerant and available refrigerant. These machines have a minimum operating level of two kilograms. I hit OK. And it takes us to our main menu, our automatic manual. We'll check out setup. We have eco lock. We can enable or disable eco lock. Back. 
charge mode. We have quick mode and zero tolerance. Quick mode is a one-time charge. Zero tolerance will have you start the vehicle uh, to recover the lines. And it's uh, a, a, about a five to 10 minute longer process and uh, higher accuracy. Back. And we can change your unit of measure. We can do pressure, bar PSI, oil weight, grams or milliliters, refrigerant weight, grams or ounces. Let's see into the setup menu. Go back here to maintenance. Here's our internal cylinder fill. Here we can select the amount that we want to fill into the machine. All right, on the 1150, we have a service option. It's going to ask for a password. The password is debug. Our service menu. Let's show the options here. This is where our calibration is. Filter replacement is here and also in the maintenance menu. Manual activations is our input output diagnostics. We have the uh, solenoids and uh, the pumps that we can manually activate on and off. We hit this button and it gives us a picture of the machine schematic with the labels. We touch the screen again and it'll take us back to the manual activation screen. Analog channel view. This is our information here. It gives us all of our, our weights, our pressures internally, temperature. Go back, takes us back to our main menu. Okay. Now we're going to show the setup here of an automatic service. We have a database. These machines have a vehicle database loaded into them. We can select a vehicle make model year this way. We can also do uh, the last cycle. Uh, my database where you can save uh, common vehicles or, or vehicles you've done before. Direct input takes us to this screen. We have, we can set our vacuum time. Top number is vacuum time. Bottom number is hold time. Our oil type. Refrigerant amount and the couplers we are charging through and recovering through. The vacuum time, I touch that. The numbers are green here. This is the, uh, the minimum value the machine wants to see. We can go below that. As the letters turn red, uh, same with test time. We can go below four minutes. It will still allow the service to happen. It'll just give you a prompt here that says uh, you're below the minimum. So if we hit start, it's going to ask us about our oil type. Say yes. 
check oil level empty exhausted oil container the 1150 has a load cell for the oil bottles so before you start every service it asks you to empty the uh, waste oil or exhausted oil container yes and it says connect to vehicle and open couplers this machine has eco lock disabled if it were enabled it would tell us to connect to vehicle and do not open couplers continue with yes and it starts the process